care. I'm trying to escape all of the noise in the back of the shop because Eddie is vacuuming. So putting together your paint gun, super basic, super quick. Of course you got your paint cup, of course you got your cap. When you're done painting, you should always clean inside here. You can get little trash in here that will come out, uh, run through the gun and can get in your paint. And you should also clean all your threads uh, around here. Make sure you clean the inside of the gun decent. Make sure you clean around this. Make sure you clean around the edge of your cap decent because that's what gets your seal. And if you get too much buildup on here, then the cap don't want to go in if you have a push-in style cap. If you have a thread on cap, it's even more important to clean inside of here because then it don't want to thread on when it gets uh, clogged all up. And normally what I do is after I have cleaned inside my thread on cap, I leave it setting separate. Normally this is how I store my caps is like that. That way everything can air dry because when you have this paint thinner on this, paint thinner on that, uh, and the you have loosened up the paint that was around here, sometimes there's a little residue left and it can get sticky. So if I cap this off after I have cleaned it, then sometimes it wants to be a real pain to get apart and a twist on cap is even worse. So I normally I always take the nipple of the breather in the cap, just sit it like that. That's how I store my cups. I don't put my guns back together um, at all, leave them apart. The inside hole of the cap is very important. I use a toothpick, clean that out. That's what allows air to be sucked into your cap uh, while you're painting to keep air, to keep paint flowing. Obviously you have to have air come in, paint come out. So it's important to keep that hole inside there cleaned out. Um, I have had issues where I have skipped on cleaning this out, um, you know, for a week or so. And then I'm getting, and the more on my primer gun, not on this gun, I cleaned this gun with detail. But uh, on my primer gun, I will skip cleaning that and then I'll go to shoot primer and it's like blowing nothing out of it at all, hardly. Like, uh, because it's literally got a vacuum and it can't, uh, the paint can't come out with suction. So when you're cleaning them, that's important to me putting them back together. The gun, this is as far as I take my gun apart. Most all guns will come apart like this. So I take the needle out of it, um, your paint needle. This is where the different sizes are. Uh, when you see different sizes, like one, three, one, four, stuff like that, that relates to the nozzle. I believe this would be called the nozzle. That may be not the technical term. Um, some paint guns look different, but you always have some sort that screws in first. And then the needle, the needle goes inside here. It seats up to the end right here. So these two have to work together. These two items are what determine your size. You can change these out to get different, um, to get different actual sizes. Uh, to take the needle out, all paint guns normally unscrew and have a spring. So it's important to not lose that spring. I also keep the threads on this clean. I clean all this up with paint. Thinner. Normally this doesn't get paint thin or paint on it because it's in the back of the gun, but I clean it up every couple of runs just to make sure that it's uh, good to go. Now my cap, ah, excuse me, my nose is all messed up. Um, my cap does come apart. So you have this little black ring that's inside here. Um, that is like a, uh, a lip seal for inside the gold piece around the perimeter and then this piece comes out. So I'm not going to take it out right now. I actually never ever pull it out, uh, but often it literally just falls out. And whenever it does fall out, I normally take the opportunity to go ahead and clean it. I'm going to see if I can get it to fall out right now. I can't. Normally if it, oh, no, oh, it is. There we go. Okay. So that's what your lip looks like. Okay. You can get these replacements. It's about time for me to actually order a replacement one because it's starting to get some cracks in it but that comes apart like that. Now, not all paint guns um, are as user-friendly to take apart. Uh, some of them are not designed to take apart, but when this one comes apart, I clean all inside here. Uh, your little tiny holes that are inside the cap right here or the center, you have on this one, we have the big center hole that the needle goes through, and then we have uh, three little holes, I think, two. We have two little holes uh, right beside it, and then we have two uh, larger ones on the edge right here. That all has to do with airflow. So when you're holding it up like this, you should be able to see through them. If these little tiny holes beside here start to get clogged up, you can use a carburetor cleaner. Um, if your kit did not come with uh, something to clean that out and that will get them uh, holes all cleaned out so that you can get the airflow through it. Besides that, keep your outer holes all cleaned out so that uh, they don't get clogged up. And that's uh, the basics on the cap. Mike, you want to come teach people about paint gun? Yeah, don't buy a real expensive one if you're only going to use it once a year. The Harbor Freight paint gun is actually perfectly fine for uh, beginner painting. Um, it's like 10 bucks. If you mess it up, you don't clean it, it don't flow right or something like that. You can literally throw it in the trash can. Um, so I definitely highly recommend the Purple Harbor Freight gun if you're starting out. 
I use also every now and then spray gun lube. So you cannot just use any lube on your uh, paint gun. Do not take the lubrication that you put in the end of air tools and put inside your paint gun because you are gonna destroy your paint gun and have fish eyes everywhere. So this contains no silicone or anything like that at all. Uh, the part number on this is SSL-10. I don't know if that will pick up, but uh, that's the part number on this if you wanna look it up off of Amazon or eBay or anything like that. I uh, got this from a local paint store, NCS, so you can probably pick it up from your local paint store. But I don't do this every single time. I just do it randomly. Um, probably could do it every single time, but I always put that one in first. And then most of the time your paint gun will come with a paint gun tool. Don't use, uh, you can use any other wrench, wrenches, but try to use the actual correct tool. And then I literally just, just put it against your leg and just snug it. In. You don't need to tighten the piss out of that, but that does need to be um, pretty snug. And then you just put your cap back on. Don't have your cap like that, that's wrong because now your pattern, let's see here, is coming out sideways like this. So I guess if you wanted to paint like that, that'd be fine. But you want your um, centerpiece to be pretty much at a 90 from the the handle like that and then that's going to put your fan pattern out like that so when you're painting you're like that on the needle all i do is put um, a drop a little bit on it cover the whole thing with it and then that will go in there and make sure it slides good so that it does not wear the uh, insides out extra fast or faster than needed screw that in sometimes that can be a pain uh, if you have the wrong spring and you're having to put a ton of force on it or whatever to get it in you probably got the wrong spring and then that's completely that's completely together you see i've dropped mine one or two times so guns had a rough life this piece right here i actually sent a video to uh, my buddy that had asked questions off of the channel about setting up the actual gun so you were ready to paint and in that video, that guy had an air pressure regulator on the end of his. So a lot of people start to get uh, a little OCD about the numbers, the air pressure numbers. And in that video, he said to take this and crank this all the way out and leave this all the way out. Um, that would only apply if you're using an air pressure regulator. So either way, you have to have um, some kind of regulator to control the air pressure that is coming out the the end of the actual gun. So if you're using an air pressure regulator with the numbers, you would keep this wide open all the time so there's no restriction here and you would make your adjustment there. So myself and I know quite a few painters do not use an air pressure regulator anymore. Uh, I've had a couple of them failed and then I simply just got sick of uh, replacing them. Uh, after you've painted for a while, you learn to go off of just pure sound and how, how everything sounds. So you'll have to, for me, I'll have to readjust this now in the booth, which I always check it uh, anyway before I start spraying. And sometimes I make minor um, adjustments depending on what I'm spraying, but normally the air pressure doesn't get touched. So if I'm really trying to bust up something like clear coat, I'll bump this up a little higher versus base coat, I'll leave this down a little lower. And if I'm trying to stretch base coat, if I'm running low on base coat and I'm trying to stretch it, we'll actually choke the air pressure way down um, to the point that it's not putting paint necessarily busting it out into the air and we're getting almost 100% paint directly onto the panel. So if you have your air pressure too high, then what that's going to do is that is going to basically be pushing the paint towards the panel, but the air is going to hit the panel, I guess in theory, sometimes first before the paint and it's going to kind of do a blowback and it's going to push the paint off the panel and overspray all over everything, your floor and everything like that. You're going to have a lot more overspray in the air because your, your air pressure is too high and that's pushing the paint away from the panel, you know, kind of kicking it back towards you. Uh, too low of air pressure will make the gun um, look like it's spinning and it will be real speckly, almost like a uh, bed liner in a truck. It'll have more texture to it. And then what you're doing is you're creating uh, yourself an orange peel. And then when you stack your clear over top of that, all your clear coat is going to have even more orange pit in it. So if you're using single stage, then you get one shot, you know, whatever your first, whatever your first coat looks like is almost going to be what your last coat looks like. Uh, it's even kind of the same thing on base coat, clear coat. The difference is on base coat, clear coat, uh, if you're not happy with your base coat, you can technically stop, water sand all the base coat to get the orange peel out of it, redust it if you need to sand up any metallics. 
and then you can go back over top of all that with your uh, with your clear coat. But uh, normally what you lay down first, your foundation, whether it's your sealer or whatever, that's what you're setting yourself up for your final paint job to look like. Uh, with primer, if you lay down orange peely primer, that's perfectly fine. Uh, often primer is more orange peeled because you should be blocking your primer out before you paint. Any anyway. air pressure can control or can play a factor in how your final product looks. So it's kind of important. Um, I often hear numbers like 28 PSI or so if you're um, looking at that, but check your data sheet. Sometimes it recommends the air pressure that their product should be sprayed at. So whether it's a clear coat or base coat, sometimes that will be in the data sheet. Uh, if not, you're just gonna have to play around with it because I really don't have no advice for what number you should be spraying at. And I can tell you that I do adjust my air pressure. So it's not like there's a set magic number for you to go just start at, you know, you literally should just be looking and kind of listening and see if, uh, spray yourself a test panel, see if it's looking like bed liner and texture or what happens when you bump the air pressure up. Does it lay out a lot better, but do you feel like there's a lot more blowing back on you? So if I spray like single stage at a higher PSI to bust it up, my paint gun will actually be covered in single stage. And a lot of times between coats, I'll clean my paint gun off because I'm spraying at such a high PSI, I probably shouldn't be, but um, it's busting up the thick single stage really good and I can actually get single stage to lay out pretty decent doing that method, but it gets my gun dirty. Whereas a normal base coat clear coat job, I won't really have much overspray on my, on my paint gun, especially base coat. I'll never have base coat overspray on my paint gun. Uh, the only thing that I might have over, uh, overspray is clear coat if I bump up the PSI a little hard on the clear coat to bust it up, especially right now in this heat here is I'm having to crank up some PSI or clear to get it to flow out um, along with doing some other stuff. So this is your needle. Every single gun's gonna be different. So wherever you screwed in uh, the cap at to put the needle in, it's always gonna be in the back of the gun, never on the side. You, you screw that in to make adjustments on how much fluid comes out. So the further you screw this in, the closer it sets that needle to the tip in there. That means when you pull this trigger back, pulling the needle back away from that tip, that's, if this is cranked in, then that's the less amount of fluid that can go out, leak out of the end on, you know, blowing into the air. So the farther this is bumped out, then the more you can have, you know, reaction. You will get to a point where this actually, you'll feel it if you, mine's a little tight, but if you, you can crank it in so far and it actually won't even engage the trigger. Um, to a certain point, like right there, now mine's finally engaging the trigger. I can feel the trigger in my hand starting to push this way because I'm cranking in the needle. So what I do normally on mine, how I paint every single job, unless I'm in some tricky situation where I'm really trying to uh, turn the PSI way down, uh, choke the fan pattern in, and I'm trying to use my paint gun as like an airbrush where I'm just trying to feather in a little tiny spot, I never uh, adjust my needle. I always leave it wide open so that it's flowing all the paint it possibly can. And if I need to not give it as much, I literally just don't pull it back because when you pull back on your trigger, that pulls your needle away from the cap. So the less you pull back on the trigger, the less paint's coming out. And then obviously the more you pull back, the more paint's coming out. So you can easily um, adjust this with just your trigger without having to do that. That just sets it up so that you can screw that in and not have, um, you know, not physically be able to pull that trigger back by mistake. So if you're a beginner, you may want to, you know, choke this in maybe 50% just so you don't get runs. But then the problem with that is if you, the more you choke this in, the less paint that comes out the end, then the slower it's going to take you to paint because the less paint you're putting on the panel. So the longer the job is going to take you to do, meaning it could also look drier. You could dry spray if you're not moving um, slow enough because if you have this choke back then you have to move slower if you have this wide open you can move faster because it's you know pounding out more material the other setting which I think on the Harbor Freight gun is found on the side is um, you know on mine it's right back here that controls your fan to learn any of these settings and get comfortable with these settings all you need to do is simply put paint thinner or water if you're gonna put water in your paint gun I have done it before but if you're gonna put water in your paint gun um, make sure that you clean it out 100% and dry it out because you don't want one little water droplet left inside the paint gun and then you go to put your clear in it, whatever, and it go into it. It's not going to be a disaster. You know, you're just going to be having to use another trick that I have not taught y'all yet to bust the water droplet out of paint, you know, or to, you know, to lift it off of clear coat without actually touching the clear coat. Um, 
So you want to make sure, try to use paint thinner because it'll evaporate and it will clean as you're doing it. So it will flow through everything and clean it out. And if you're using like a new Harbor Freight gun or anything, a lot of people recommend running paint thinner through it so that you can clean out any assembly lubricants or anything that they may have got in there or any contaminants so that it don't go into your paint job. If you're brand new to painting and you have a brand new gun, then obviously I highly recommend you running a test panel. So whether it's on a piece of plywood, an old microwave, a piece of plastic, a piece of paper, you know, an old door, whatever you got, I would spray the paint gun against something to start seeing your fan pattern and start playing with your um, needle, the fluid flow. So on your fan pattern, what I actually do on my paint gun is, and then on yours, you'll figure it out yourself, is I know for a fact there's a little, a little slash on the end of that. I don't know if y'all can see that. As you turn this thing, okay, that slash is gonna move around, that's a mark. So what I know to do on my gun, automatically go to, um, is I will run this in and out often to clean all the gunk out. Mine actually has a lot of gunk up inside here. You probably can't see that, but it needs to be, it needs to be cleaned out a little bit better. Um, I will take this and I crank this all the way in, one cycle with that all the way around, two cycles, and then a half. So I actually turned this thing, this fan pattern all the way in two and a half turns uh, to get the fan that I want. That's just my go-to fan setup. Now, if I want to choke the fan in, if we're painting the small part, and I very rarely will I do it, but if, if it's really small and I need to get inside a little tight area or something, I might choke it in to close the fan pattern up from, you know, traditionally like this to maybe more like this. Or if we're doing a little tiny, tiny touch up and we're turning the air pressure down using like an airbrush, then of course I would choke it into where it's a point practically. But using a paint gun where it's choked in so far that the fan has turned into a point will give you a run within a split millisecond. Like it is so fast to run it if you're not paying attention. So even me, whenever I do choke my fan pattern in, uh, my first spray, I'll either spray it on a test panel or spray it on the paper or plastic on the window or something, um, just to make sure my airflow and all that's right. Because that takes a little bit of getting, uh, used to and a little bit of adjustments when you're trying to choke a paint guns fan pattern all the way in so that's uh that's that normally most guns will recommend not choking it all the way in but also not choking you know not blowing it all the way out um sometimes if you let your fan pattern all the way open then the paint gun will not spray a hundred percent um correctly you won't get quite the correct pattern that you're looking for and uh, it just, the airflow won't be perfect. So a lot of people even recommend to go all the way open and bump it back. But again, every single gun is gonna be different. I've got Chinese knockoff uh, fake guns, uh, actual name brand guns that have been cloned and they're knockoffs and they're fake uh, that I absolutely love. And then I have Sprayboard Harbor Freight guns. And then this is a uh, real deal, a WADA uh, Supernova. So I, you know, the name brand gun that I'm holding right here, I don't know what this thing costs. I paid, I think it was like $400 for it used or $300 for it used, something like that. Maybe a little more, I don't remember. But I think new this gun was like six or 800 bucks. I mean, you can get guns that are a couple thousand dollars. Uh, uh, is it worth it to most people? Anybody probably watching my channel? Absolutely not, you're throwing money away. You don't even need this. Um, when this gun goes bad, if I don't find another used uh, name brand gun, I will be buying the Harbor Freight Black Widow gun. So I have seen a ton about the Harbor Freight Black Window gun, Widow gun that professionals say that that thing sprays absolutely amazing. So I myself will not be even going back to a name brand gun because um, I'm just not into paying for name brand stuff. So name brand tools is not really my thing. Um, you know, if the tool works good, why throw away a bunch of money? So that's pretty much the basics of the paint gun. I actually did not expect to break down the paint gun that much for y'all. I figured we would come in here and uh, touch on this thing for a couple of seconds and then we go into booth and paint, but I got a feeling that that's gonna run long enough where that's gonna be a wrap and hopefully you can get the painting. So like, comment, subscribe, and share, and I'll catch y'all in the next video. Thanks y'all.